Hello, I'm Simon Revel. I'm the Export Sales Manager for Claydon Drills. I'm going to talk to you today about worm counts, something that we've started to do here on the farm in East Anglia. I want to go through the process and talk to you about our findings and what the benefits that OptiTill has given to the farm and what it's doing to the fields and the biota in the soil. So, as you know, we're strip drilling. We are the originators. And what we have found in the last 17 years is real benefits to the soil. And bearing in mind that as we go through this, all we're doing is putting straw back into the field. We don't put any, or, any other organic matter into the field at all. So, what did we do? Straw harrow. The field I'm going to talk about is what we call front field, which we'll show you a little bit later on the actual field itself. And we straw harrowed it three times. Uh, it was wheat originally, then we had all seed rape, which was last year, and it's gone back into wheat this year. And we first straw harrowed on the 23rd of July to generate and motivate volunteers, particularly the all seed rape and any other weeds that were in the field to grow. We then thinned that out because we had a good flush originally. So we wanted to leave some of the all seed rape, but we didn't want the rape to get too big because that would have worked against us. So as you can see here, we were straw harrowing and this, as you can see, is the first flush that we had. And then this is after the second harrowing where we thinned it out. But what we have found is if we leave some of the volunteers, um, whether it be a wheat crop or a rape crop, with some of the residue, uh, with some of the weeds, then it keeps the soil alive. So we've got that symbiotic thing going on underground where the roots are still working and they're keeping the uh, bugs and everything active within the rhizosphere of the plant. So that's working really well. And this is what we're looking to do. We don't want to disturb the soil right across the full working width because we start destroying the soil biota, whether that's the earthworm waves, the waves that you can see in the black or the old roots. And what we have discovered is if we turn the soil over, then the UV from the sunlight kills all the beneficial bacteria, kills the enzymes, destroys those, uh, also the fungi and the protozoa, which is so important to the interaction to get the food from that's in the soil into the crop. So we don't want to disturb that at all. Front field, uh, it's about 19 hectares. Uh, the previous crop before the all seed rape two years ago was wheat. It was yielding over 10 tonnes, about 10.2. Uh, the rape yield was 4.2 tonnes per hectare and it's gone into wheat, which is uh, skyscraper. Uh, we, it was drilled on the 30th of October uh, at um, 250 kilograms per hectare, uh, about 350 seeds per square metre. Uh, and you'll see the crop a little bit later and it does really look good. So what we've done, uh, I went out on the uh, beginning of April, just as lockdown happened, and had some time out in the field, which was great. So I dug 10 different soil pits at random walking right across the field okay and then my spade there as you can see the hole wasn't massive okay a piece of plastic and then I actually pulled all the soil apart and that's how we count the worms then I segmented uh, separated the worms as you can see here into three different sections so we've got the three different worm types that we found and the the actual um, findings were really spectacular. Now bearing in mind that we're not putting any organic matter back. So if you look at the top line, total number of earthworms, you can see in one of those soil pits was up to 52. So that's, if you imagine that, that's not very big, it's 52 worms. And what you're looking at there is you can see it's pretty consistent. So we got some really high numbers there. Now you, you might wonder why we've got the high numbers at the top all I'm doing is counting the juveniles, and this is based on Jackie Stroud's uh, worm count that she devised uh, two years ago, two, three years ago. So all we're looking for is the adults. Okay, so what I've done here is recorded the adult worms that we've got. And we've got a good spread 
right the way across from the epigeic worm, which lives right in the top, which is really a, a sort of feeder of, of leaves and the residue in the top. Then you've got the endogeic, and they're the fellas that work horizontally. They're quite distinctive in their colour because they look very pale and almost green. And then you've got the big fellas, the end, uh, anisic worms, that work deep. Now, what was interesting is although I found a lot of juveniles of the anisic worms, the big ones had started to go deep because we then went into the dry period that Jeff talked about earlier, and it was very, very dry. And I could, I could see the big worm burrows that they'd left, but they'd obviously gone down deep to be secure into the moisture. But as you can see here, it's pretty significant. Now, some of the work that Jackie's done in their survey in 2018 with the AHDB was there was only 15% of the field surveyed, okay, that had a likely presence of worms. So that meant out of the 10 pits, they only found worms in seven of them. So you can see from our work that we're doing here. Now, I haven't put the other work up that I did because I did this last autumn, uh, two autumns ago. Um, and that was probably the wrong time to do it. It's better to do it off in the spring. It wants to be done before it gets too dry, okay? And we're gonna continue doing this now around the farm to check what we've got in individual fields. But we know from the way that the crop residue is processed that we have high worm counts on almost all parts of the farm. So over the 360 hectares, we have some really good worm numbers. So that's really encouraging. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that the soil is in pretty good shape. Okay, so we've got, we know that the interaction between the worms and all the soil biota is, is symbiotic. It's happening all the time and you don't get one without the other. And that's one of the reasons why when we see the soil pit later, you'll see why the soil is in such good condition. Okay, so we're not doing any cultivations. All we're doing is straw harrowing. We have a timed straw harrow. Jeff makes the decision on the farm individually, by each field, by the weather conditions, by the germination of the volunteers. Sometimes we only straw harrow twice. We might even do it four times, but that's all we do. And then we're seeding with the, with the hybrid drill. So we're actually strip seeding. And as you saw from the previous picture, we're only cultivating in that area around where we want to seed. So that's, my bit on the earthworm recording sheet. We will do more of this next spring. I will try and get more time to do more fields, but it will be interesting to look. What I would encourage you to do is to go out and have a look in your own fields. It's not that difficult. If you go on the AHDB website, you can actually find the survey sheet. There's an instruction in there how to identify the worms. There's even a little test to test you against so you can identify them and get the scoring right. And it gives you an idea of what's going on within the soil and just how healthy it is. And the one thing at Claydon is, we are very, very motivated by making sure that we have good, healthy soil for the future. And it makes a lot of difference to the business because you're gonna grow healthier crops, you're gonna reduce erosion, and you're gonna make more profit. Thank you. Okay, so we find ourselves out in the field. This is front field where I did the uh, worm count a little bit earlier that we spoke about. I do apologise about the wind, but it's a beautiful day here. Uh, as you can see, the crop's looking really good. Now, I just wanted to go through what we were talking about earlier. Um, this is my famous lady spade, and everybody uh, pulls my leg about it, but I can tell you when the soil starts to get dry and hard, then it's a very sensible option. So it's stainless steel. This is about the size that I would take uh, it's a nine inch by, um, what's that, about six inches wide. Take a slightly bigger pit than that for the worm count. As I say, we go to the depth, take all the soil out, pop it on a piece of plastic, and then pull the soil apart. Okay, so what I want to talk about here, and when you do your soil pit, it's random. It's a bit like doing a plant count. So you just walk across the field. It doesn't have to be could be in the tram line, it could be in the row, outside the row. The one thing that 
the hybrid system gives us with the OptiTill drilling is the fact that we are very good at carrying machinery in the field. And as you can see here, this is a tram line. I think this has probably had about uh, five passes with Jeff's self-propelled sprayer. And you can see that the tram line is very shallow. Yes, you would argue that maybe the tram line is in the same place. If the soil is damaged, what's the point in trying to seed into it? But that means, what it does mean, that when you're harvesting and you're grain carting, that the trafficability in the field is that much better. So the carrying capacity, even in a wet time, okay, during a wet harvest, is very good. And I will defy anybody to find a wheeling in a clayed and well-established field uh, through the growing season, because that's not the norm. Okay, um, the other thing I'd like to talk about as well while we're looking at this is We've produced this saw booklet, which you can see, and I'll just move towards the camera. Now, this is something we've produced to help you as growers to get the best out of the hybrid system. And there's a lot of information in here. There's also more information through links to our website concerning things like saw structure, drainage, and the benefits of that. And it's a, it's a really worthwhile guide um, to take up and look at if you're considering coming over to a strip-till drilling system. Uh, there's a lot of information there. Now, if you would like, if you're interested in this, then please contact us either via email, via the website, or even phone into the office, and we would be more than happy to forward this to you. It's a very useful guide. There's a lot of information in there, a lot of scientific information to do with soil health, and this is what's really motivating us as a business. Thank you.